everyone, my name is Monica Reynolds. I'm an Azure specialist, and today we're gonna walk through how to create and manage subscriptions, as well as adding users to your subscriptions through role-based access. Part of this is going to be a walkthrough slide deck of how to do it, and the other part is going to be a live demo, just because since I have an internal subscription, mine looks a little bit differently than yours, so I wanted to give you some actual more accurate screenshots of what this process would look like. So this is a screenshot of the enterprise admin portal. This is the ea.azure.com portal. Uh, this is where you need to go for your first subscription to set up. Now for your free, your ones after this, you can go to our other portal that is for our subscriptions specifically and our account owners. But for the very first one, you need to go here. I see all four tabs. That means I am both an enterprise admin. And since I can see this add subscription button, that means I am also an account owner for this enrollment. Now remember, only an account owner can create a subscription. So if I do not see this add subscription option, that means I need to add myself as an account owner. And I'll go back to the account tab and add myself as an account owner. When you add yourself as an account owner, it gives you two options. It gives you an option to check a box that says dev test. That means do you want this account to be associated to a dev test subscription? If you check yes, that account will have the option to set up a dev test subscription or a production subscription. Otherwise, it'll set up as a production subscription. So for our very first subscription, we are going to click here and we must click this option for our first subscription. This will tie your subscriptions to this enrollment moving forward. So after clicking add subscription, you'll be taken to the account portal. This is account.windowsazure.com and this is the only spot where you can create subscriptions. Now account owners will be the only ones with access to this portal. When you go and you add a new subscription to your enrollment, it will default to saying Microsoft Azure Enterprise, and that means that offer and billing is associated to your Azure enrollment. When you add your first subscription to the account, it's going to ask you to provide your contact information, and all subsequent subscriptions will just ask for a terms and agreement, as well as a purchase button. So you'll notice for your first time it says sign up, uh, but for all subsequent subscriptions it will say purchase. Uh, now, do not let this purchase uh, freak you out in any way because what that means is you are not actually purchasing anything. Uh, there's no cost to actually spinning up a subscription. However, it does say purchase here. So just know that you're not actually spending any money by creating a subscription space. So after going through the process of spinning up your subscription for the first time, you can now use this portal to spin up your future subscriptions. So this is account.windowsazure.com. You can see my amazing handwriting here. So for all future subscriptions, you can just click this button here. Um, you also have the option to rename your subscriptions here. So we highly recommend you do this. Uh, for I, I'm not even sure if these would be my favorite examples, but you might want to typically look at you know a production subscription name and something that maybe highlights that this is a dev test subscription. Or uh, for this case, this is uh, specific to Mayo's database. So having a name that really reflects what's going on in that subscription will be important as you move forward. So each new subscription will default to this name here, Microsoft Azure Enterprise. So you'll want to rename this like we talked about before, but you notice this option here as well. So if you are an account owner and you checked that box that says you have the dev test option, you will see this option for MSDN dev test here. And what it's talking about is if you have licenses for MSDN subscriptions, you can bring the Azure portion into your enterprise enrollment and associate it to this enrollment versus having it in a personal space. So that is possible. However, please do note that if you use the same email that you're using for your personal MSDN benefits and you have the same account owner email here, you will lose your personal benefits if you check this option. So you'll want to use a different email than what you're using for any of the personal MSDN benefits if you're going to follow this option here. Now besides subscriptions, the other thing to note that would, is important about this portal 
is preview features. So this is where you can go to look at what features are in preview that you could spin up in your services. Now remember, preview features are not, not yet GA, so their SLAs aren't in place and their pricing is not going to be necessarily what it is what it, once it hits GA, but you do have the option to try out services. So that's the other tab to look at if you just want to look at what's in preview that you could spin up in your environment today. Now the last thing to walk through is connecting your AD to Azure for role-based access. So if you have Office 365 today, you have Azure Active Directory, and you're probably syncing it with your on-premise AD or wherever your AD is hosted through DirSync or AD Connect or, or some means that is allowing a single sign-on and other benefits uh, through Azure Active Directory and connecting your AD to the cloud. You can also connect that through your Azure subscriptions to allow role-based access such as some of the, the common roles here. There are over 40 different roles available in Azure just inherently, and if you don't see a role that you like, you can create a custom one. The steps to do this is below here, and we'll walk through this, but this is being done in our classic portal. So if you're not familiar with the classic portal, that is okay. This was our old Azure portal. We've moved to the Azure Resource Manager portal or ARM portal. That is where you're spinning up the most of your services but the directory piece is still in our classic portal along with some, some few other resources. So it is very rare that you would have to use this classic portal beyond this service, but uh, you'll see it today as just as something to be aware of. So to associate your AD with Azure so that you can do role-based access, you're just gonna go over here to new, app services, scroll down to active directory, click on directory and custom create. And here's where you're going to need somebody with global admin rights to set this up for you. So you're gonna add the name of the directory, your domain name, and then after this, once it's approved, this is about as far as I can go um, since I'm not a global admin. Uh, once it's approved, you will then be able to agree to use your directory with Azure uh, and sign back in and have that directory associated. So it's very simple and straightforward, but you do need a global admin with global admin rights to your AD to be able to do this. Now, once you have your AD associated here, you can go over to your Azure portal and I can start uh, adding role-based access to my subscription. So if I go over to a, my subscriptions here and I click on it and I go into settings, I can start adding users. So if we wanna see a list of the different roles here, I can show you a list of the roles. And you can see here are the 40 different roles I can add to my subscription. So if I wanna add a user, um, I can just click here, add. And now since I was the account owner of this subscription, it says inherited because I created it, so I inherited the subscription management, but I can assign this to somebody else. I can add a service admin. So note that as well. We talked about that in another video here. But to add a role, I can just pick one of these options. So I could say contributor. That means that they can spin up services, but they cannot add additional users to my subscription. And then it's simply just typing in a name. So if I wanna look for my technical counterpart here, oh, and he has a W. And there's my good friend, Eric. I can click on him, select, and then I can give him this access to my subscription. So a couple last things to talk about are resource groups and security. So when you look to start deploying your resources in your subscription you've just set up, look at really using those resource groups to manage how things are deployed and who has access to what. 
So not only can you add role-based access to these resource groups, uh, there's a lot of other interesting things that you can do. For instance, um, remember a resource group is being able to collect uh, your services into a, a bucket essentially that can be created together, updated together, and deleted together. So these are services that you want to have all at the same life cycle. So if we take the easy example of ADFS and migrating your ADFS into Azure for high availability, you could deploy the, your networking, your VMs, your DCs, everything as a resource group and keep it collected here. You can see um, with one click, I could just delete it. Um, and then I no longer have that. So for dev test purposes, it becomes really easy to be able to spin up and spin down a whole collection of resources very quickly. You can also add tags. So for cost center purposes, if I have one subscription that I'm using for multiple projects from multiple different groups that require different billing methods, I would assign a resource tag here that can then be a cost center or a certain value. A, a key might be um, this is for marketing or a value would be this is their cost center. So you can assign tags to your resource groups for tracking. Another really interesting feature to be aware of is actually the JSON templates that we've talked about and, and being able to create a template of, of what you've deployed. So everything that you deploy in a resource group can actually create a, a generic template for you of what those resources are that it's, you can then reuse. So it's infrastructure as code. So there's a way to actually take this template and create parameters around it and changes so that it could be reused um, to deploy multiple projects that might be similar in the, in the future. So if you think of student labs, for example, just changing the number of VMs or creating a best practice of what your networking should look like uh, or a VPN gateway and then being able to share that to multiple groups in your organization. So just a couple things to think about here. The other thing I want to show you is Azure Security Center. So if you do not have this enabled today or you're not using it, please do. This is a really great feature in Azure to start monitoring the health of your services. So this is in real time monitoring what you have deployed and giving you recommendations of what needs fixing. If there is any brute force attack going on, it would show up here and let you know. Um, just so you know as well, if you aren't aware, uh, Azure does protect against DDoS attacks. So know that that protection is there. But I can then drill in on my sp particular services here and get really detailed information on what's going on, what needs to be updated, uh, what are some of the issues that I'm facing, and, and whatnot. So all of that detailed reporting is here uh, and gives me recommendations. So that was a quick video and a quick look at how to set up your subscriptions and some basic management scenarios. Please feel free to watch the rest of our video series on networking, storage, computing, and getting started on actually spinning up services in Azure.